Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan, and this is a very Japanese centric video, particularly talking about what is happening in the banks regarding stable coins here in Japan, which are pegged to the yen, and also how Brad Garlinghouse predicted this back in 2016. In addition, breaking news for more use cases for crypto that I think could possibly have an impact on Amazon. But first, I wanna take a look at this story by Musaho. They are going to issue a digital currency that is pegged to the Japanese yen, and it is to be available next month, which March 2000. 2019. Just so you know, Mizuho, back on July 6, 2017, they did the first case in the world to use Corda, which is built by R3, for trade finance. And I found a strictly confidential document by Mizuho Bank Industry Research Division, which I'm going to share with you. And it tells us, uh, it was written 16 months ago, but it tells us that Mizuho has totally stayed on track with their vision. Just to give you an idea of the size of Mizuho, they are a bank that has 59,000 employees. They trade on the New York Stock Exchange. They have 796 offices in Japan. They manage $1.8 trillion in US dollars and the gross profit in 2016 was 19 billion USD. They recently did a joint venture with Blue Lab to get this digital money in the pipeline executed. And let's take a look at that confidential document. I don't know how confidential it is, but you can see here at the time that they put it together, it was strictly confidential and for discussion purpose only. I don't think it's that confidential anymore because I wouldn't have been able to find it so easily in the PDF form out on the internet. However, it's very, very telling as to what their strategy was. So they saw this as a nationwide platform. They were going to launch it as a new business model and they envisioned all the Japanese banks would use it to move to this cashless society. Well, we can see though from the recent news that that is just not going to be the case because it has become very fragmented now. So these stable coins, which are pegged to the Japanese yen, they will most likely have the KYC done in advance so that the user can take their cash, turn it into electronic money and use it with their smartphone. And in this case, they saw it as a single brand coin. And what I found very interesting is that they didn't see the payments or settlement network as a blue ocean. That was a red ocean uh, as being identified, which means there's not a lot of opportunity there for whatever reason. Uh, I think maybe because the space is crowded, but what they saw is the blue ocean is collecting information. So when you use these electronic coins from the banks, they know exactly where you shop, they know where you travel, they know where you're, where you're eating. They're going to share this information with advertisers and marketers. This is part of the open data bank that they are going to create. And the most concerning thing for them at that time when it was uh, written is that they were afraid that the giants from overseas would come in and monopolize the market. And that uh, was identified as uh, line from South Korea. Alibaba from China, of course, and Apple Pay from the United States. So that was really what got them off the ground and running was this concern. So we have Mizuho who are, uh, or who is going to launch this next month. But in September 2018, we also learned that SBI Group was going to launch an S coin. And this too is pegged to the Japanese yen. And then on Wednesday, we learned that MUFG, which is the largest bank in Japan, and depending on what you look at, sometimes it's the fourth largest bank in the world, and sometimes it's listed as the fifth largest bank in the world. They have teamed up with Akamai to launch a blockchain payment network in 2020. And they are also developing a digital currency, which is called the MUFG coin. So as part of that project, it 
is really getting crowded and fragmented as Brad Garlinghouse predicted. When we look at his blog from August 2016, he speaks of the fragmentation. And I'm telling you, I worked in a very fragmented industry 20 years ago, and it is not efficient and it doesn't work well. So if we see this same kind of fragmented walled garden, whatever term you want to use in the uh, digital currency banking sector for electronic money or settlement coins, it is going to get very messy. I want to read you this one paragraph here because I think if you're on the fence as to the real value of XRP, uh, this explains it very well. So Brad writes that he strongly believes that banks need an independent digital asset to enable truly efficient settlement. And we believe XRP is best positioned for that role. It goes back to the fundamentals of what makes digital assets unique and special. They're universal currencies, meaning anyone can use them as units of value anywhere in the world. And the university gives digital assets global reach and the ability to settle much faster than traditional assets. So this is so well said that he really saw the writing on the wall back in 2016. And here is some news that I think could have an effect on Amazon. So the Japanese Amazon is called Rock 10 and it is not a surprise. It's going to soon accept cryptocurrency. I don't, I don't think there's any may about it in that subject because I know the person who has uh, founded Rock 10 and from people I know who know him, he is a very big crypto fan. In fact, he just bought uh, an exchange recently and we'll talk about that in a moment. But what I want to do is read this to you and it will explain to you how Rock 10, the Amazon of Japan, sees that using the uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, integrating them in the near future will provide them the growth and um, reach that he so believes in. So according to the earnings report published on February 12th, the company announced a major update for its mobile app platform, Rock 10 Pay, which is set to be released later this month with the potential inclusion of cryptocurrency payments in conjunction in conjunction with fiat so this updated version on the app will most likely include all payment solutions embedded into one platform leaving many to wonder if this is the indirect course of announcing support for bitcoin and other top market cryptocurrencies and so while the u.s based counterpart Amazon has been quiet on the front of cryptocurrency integration, despite the belief of Binance CEO C, uh, CZ that the company will be forced to issue their own currency. That's what CZ believes. Rock 10 has been more open to the idea of digital assets. So I think he's taking the right move. And instead of creating his own currency, he's going to uh, looks like incorporate the uh, universal ones that are independent and probably, I don't know, top five or type top six within the market cap. And here is the man behind Rock 10. This is Miki Tani-san. He is Japan's biggest mover and shaker when it comes to, uh, gosh, many businesses. He also did something kind of revolutionary back in 2010. He made it mandatory that his employees speak only English during the work hours, which was just unbelievable at that time. Uh, so in this last August, he acquired an exchange in Japan called Everybody's Bitcoin. Actually, in Japanese, it's called Mina no Bitcoin. And if we take a look, they just made an announcement uh, a couple of days ago that they are going to have a logo and brand change. And this is what it will be called from April 2019, Rock 10 Wallet. So I think this is going to, this is why everybody believes that it's going to incorporate the 
uh, cryptocurrencies with the payment app because he has just recently then uh, made this change to the Mina Bitcoin. He didn't have, you know, he bought this site uh, for $2.4 million and it enabled him to fast track to get the license from the FSA, which is the Financial Service Agency here in Japan, which functions under the Ministry of Finance. It's like the uh, at version of America's version of the SEC. So anyway, it's very interesting developments and I can't wait to see uh, the final announcement of how he plans to roll that new revised app and open this new uh, exchange. And I had something very sweet on my Twitter. Somebody said, uh, from yesterday's video, you go girl, love your videos. When my wife and I get to Japan, I would love to meet you and show my wifey, <laughs> so cute, the one girl who has helped us so much in XRP and with the tip of the hat. And it reminded me uh, of what I'm going to talk about next, which is some fluff. And this is about a little bit of Texas in Tokyo. We have a Texas bar here called uh, Little Texas, and it's not far from here. It's in Meguro, which is uh, very, it's in the central part of Tokyo. It's very close to me. And it's one of the fun places to go if you are missing a little bit of the country music or blue bluegrass. They have bluegrass night there as well. But this is a little piece of America, Texas, in the heart of Tokyo, which, seem, which seems kind of funny, but it's fun. And you can even participate in some line dancing. And here is a picture. This one is really current, actually. This just happened, what, November. They had a um, group. They have a small stage and a lot of live music. So if you're into live music and you want to see Japan's version of um, country, or bluegrass, uh, this is the place to go, and I really recommend it. But there is one thing that is very unique to Japan, and that is the record bars here. So Japan has a lot, and Tokyo has. You can't you can't want for anything in this city. It has a French Quarter, all the way to the beautiful Temple Gardens. Uh, and as I just showed you, the country bar in Meguro is just, you can find anything in Tokyo. So even if you want to step right into the Lone Star State or you want to go into one of these record bars, these are tiny tucked away places that come after the jazz kisa, which were part of the 1950s post-war Japan that made people feel like they couldn't get enough of the overseas records that they had never had access to before. And now there's these very special places with beautiful collections of records, as in the old vinyl, sometimes 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Even some of these bars have 6,000 albums behind their bar. And it's a place where the bartender also functions as a DJ. This is a great little slice of what you can find in Tokyo. Um, it, they're all different. They all have kind of a different genre. Like if you go to um, this bar here, which I've not been to this one, uh, they uh, most play Rock With You by Michael Jackson. So you can kind of see what it is that they like. And here's a serious music aficionado. He is Dogenzaka Rock. This is in Shibuya and uh, he plays Don't Look Back in Anger by Oasis most often. So he has 4,500 analog records, 6,000 CDs and 400 cassette tapes. These are serious music people. Here's another one that you might want to check out if you love music. And this guy has a total number of 5,000 records. And the most played in his bar is Young Man with a Horn by Miles Davis. Anyway, this is a great one. Now, my favorite record bar is not on this list. And I thought I will tell you where I go. 
I go to a place in Shinjuku called DMX and it's a little seedy and a, it but it is uh, an institution it's been there for I think more than 30 years and if you do go uh, yeah I think I have donated about 30 or 40 of my albums uh, that I brought with me from the United States. And I'm really happy that they have a second life. And uh, if you are listening to any, gosh, I don't want to tell you what I donated, but <laughs> you, you can guess in the comment section. But um, yeah, I'm sure that they get played a lot. And be sure to say hi to Kenji-san. And if you go, he will most likely be behind the bar. He has worked there, I think, from day one. And he will definitely take care of you. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you today. So let's enjoy watching this space develop. Take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.